All right, guys, all you Sun Devil fans, get an exciting episode for you guys today, episode 39 of the SOA podcast. We're bringing in uh, Joe Conley, head strength and conditioning coach here as charge of athletic performance here at ASU for our football team. And uh, we've got a lot of great stuff for you. And getting ready for high school sports, those of you thinking about the next level of playing, what you want to look for, we're going to go over key things that you need to do to keep safe but also make that transition much easier for you getting ready. So uh, make sure you like it, you're subscribed, you're already part of it, and let's go with the Strength of America podcast. The Strength of America podcast. All right, guys, welcome back. Bob Davis. Bobby Davis. And we've got with us Joe Conley. Appreciate you coming out. You got it. ASU. Thanks Ed for having guy me. in charge of all the strength and conditioning for the football team and getting them in, finishing the first year. We've had, saw a lot of great things out of these guys this year. And we want to kind of talk a little bit about the transition, you know, when you came in, what types of things that you saw that you needed to, you know, tweak and go adjust to. And after now this first year with these guys, mm-hmm. where you guys are heading, what you need to do from here. Yeah, I think – you know, whenever you start with a new program and a new group of, of student athletes, it's always important to kind of really start with the basics as far as, you know, we, we were teaching things in pieces. We, we kept it really, really simple, KISS principle, till you get to know those athletes a little bit better and know sure. what they're accustomed to doing. Um, I know they were probably a little frustrated initially because, you know, some of the older ones were probably used to doing some pretty advanced stuff, but for the majority of them, we needed to we keep it simple with tempos and and positioning on some of the Olympic Perfect. lifts and and just relative strength and just really working on a pretty much entirely developmental program uh, for the initial first few weeks till you kind of saw who's who and then you can kind of build on it. Sure, sure. Uh, did you see that there were you know some mechanical things or did you guys do some completely different things than what they were used to and need to do do some new lifts or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, for sure. I think. The majority of college, you know, programs in the country, they, they do cleans and they do squats and they do deadlifts. It's just a matter of doing it our way, you know, and there's nothing wrong with whatever was happening before or, or, or our way. It's just it was a little different, you know. Sure. I think we do, you know, a few different things as far as we do jerks, we do snatches, we do a lot of the classic lifts, but we do them in pieces too and we do all their variations. So, you know, whether it's behind the neck, in front of the neck, so all those different you know, nuances. It takes a little time to learn. Sure. Uh, there's different cues for each one of those and, you know, different responses you're trying to elicit from the body. So, um, but our guys picked it up quick. They really did. They did a great job. And, you know, our developmental guys stayed developmental. And then we kind of started our little block system yeah. where, you know, the training age kind of determined where, you know, they are in the program. So. Well, I think that's a big part. I think as we've, we've seen, you know, I'm talking with you now and, and some of the others and, you know, this we had a few episodes ago, Boyd Epley were back there sure. talking. I've been with him a long time. Actually, mm-hmm. this next year, he's celebrating his 50th year in Nebraska. The best, right? What's the best. On. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah. But also getting to talk where, you know, people are trying to get so much stuff. There's so much fluff out there that we're forgetting the basics, that we've got to build big, strong athletes yeah. that are durable. Yeah, there's no doubt that, you know, the, the barbells king and, and those lifts are there and they've been there forever because they work. And, yeah. you know, all the different – Technologies are great additions to that, but they'll never replace strength and power and, and the exercises that elicit those responses. Um, you know, it, it, it's it's the king of all kings. Well, I was excited. We were at uh, we were both presenting at the uh, Arizona NFCA clinic a couple mm-hmm. of weeks ago, yep. and it's well, I'm excited about because after now 35 years now being in this field, working with Nebraska at the time, and then back with our, our program for the last 30 years, is just that now we're, we're getting to hear so much more. And those of you that haven't been to these clinics, make sure you get out there because mm-hmm. it, years ago it was strictly just strength, power, build it, get massive, get ready mm-hmm. to go, which is, you know, great. We've got to do that. But durability of the athlete, we're seeing more problems. We're seeing more injuries now than we ever have done. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we're just not thinking about, let's teach how they jump, how they land, deceleration, incorporate that into our training. We can't just do all lifts and that's all we're doing. Yeah, movement. Movement is key and being able to move – through planes of motion and be strong through all those planes of motion. Um, that that that's hugely important. That's that's your injury prevention. You can do all the the rotator cuff exercises yep. with bands and all that stuff is is great and it needs to be in your program. But in reality, just being strong through all ranges of motion, 
hugely important and being comfortable moving through all those ranges of motion, being able to execute all the lifts, being able to execute all the different positions on the field. Because typically when an injury occurs, it's because you're out of position. You know, whether it's a shoulder injury, your scalp's out of position, a knee injury, your hip and your femur's out of position, it's a positional thing. You know, it's alignment. So. Yeah, that's good. No, that's great. Yeah. I, th I think uh, when we're going through, and you were speaking at the clinic, and what I like, you know, you're you're poking fun after, uh, and J. A. Graves is going through and talking some different things, and mm -hmm. it's kind of some different things. But at the, all, at the end of the day, it's just good movement. I think everybody yeah. goes back to it. And it's like talking about behind the neck overhead mm -hmm. jerks and stuff like that, and people can be so scared of it. But just like you said, if you take the time to break it into pieces, you know, and just get comfortable, that goes back to kind of like you were saying about uh, just get comfortable with every kind of movement and in mm -hmm. different planes and different motions. And it's like, man, if you can be pretty solid where most people are scared, then you're probably going to be a pretty durable athlete. Yeah, so, for so, sure. So. No, I appreciate that. I think Anything overhead, it, it's it's a it's it's always going to be a mobility concern. But if it, the movement qualities are pure and they're good, then you need to be training in that plane. Yeah. Um, if they're not, then you fix it and then you train in that plane. Yeah. So it's it's yeah. not it's not rocket science, you know. And yeah. and typically with a in particular an overhead movement, you can kind of pinpoint where that issue is going to be even beforehand, whether it's T spine or or, you know, pec mobility or, sure. you know, the scap, it's going to be one of those three things that you got to fix. Yeah. And it's not a hard fix typically if you start it right and you progress it over time. Well, and that's where I think getting back to the basics, you talk about that area, and you can be great in one shoulder, but not on the other one. Mm -hmm. The range of motion and what's happening. We see that with our baseball players and stuff too. You know, in particular, the lifting and what that, they're doing. Yeah. They get in, they're so dominant on mm -hmm. one side, neglect the other, mobility is soft. But if you can get, fix those things originally, get them to work on those. Mm -hmm. Man, they, there's no reason they can't do those lifts and keep up with them. Yeah, yeah. if you look at, you know, I, I always go back to gymnastics. You know, if you look at gymnastics in particular, it starts young. It starts young, and they get tremendous at relative strength. And they're typically muscular athletes, but they move tremendous. And it's because they're used to and accustomed to all ranges of motion all the time. Yeah. You can be a big athlete and a mobile athlete at the same time. Yeah. Sure, you sure. know. It kind of falls in or use it or lose it. You've got to keep up with that. And these kids that, that tend to do one sport year-round and don't train accordingly to keep up with it, yeah, all they do it. is they throw all the time. They're baseball players. Yep. all they do. And they don't work any kind of conditioning off outside of that or strength training or, mm -hmm. or balancing them. It's just a matter of when they're going to have problems. That's why we're seeing so many of these guys with their uh, Tommy Johns and shoulder problems, rotator No problems. doubt. It's ridiculous. No doubt. You know, our... our we had a press conference yesterday we had our signing day and our defense coordinator made mention of, I think 18 out of the 21 guys we signed were all multi-sport athletes. That's what we look for awesome. because they have to have that base, that foundation, you sure. know, and, and I was talking to one of them the other day and he said, well, I got a chance to run track or I might just train. I said, go run track, yeah. go run track. You're crazy if you don't. Yeah. So you get that, you know, that part of it, that, that, that technique work, which we're just going to do when you come here anyway. Right, so if right. you have it and you're getting coached through it, you might as well do it. You yeah. know, the more sports you play, the better it is. Well, that's perfect. And that's what we talk about, you know, transitioning and what they're doing between sports. But as those kids do the track, what we really emphasize with those guys is make sure you're still continuing to do some kind of deceleration work along with it. Because typical track, they run through, they don't do any of that for months. Yeah. And now they come back in and haven't done any of that. Uh, and then we start seeing some of the, the functional problems that we've got to work on. It, it's it's more often than not, it's the slowdown. It's the deceleration, whether it's linear or lateral or or, or horizontal, vertical, however you want to, whatever plane you want to look at, it, you know, the injuries occur in deceleration and reacceleration. And, and so you have to learn to stop and stop with correct alignment or else force dissipates and, oh, sure. and it's going to go out one way or another. It's like getting struck by lightning in the top of your head. It's fine in its way to the ground, or it might go out your arm, or it might go sure. out your hip. It, it, it's the same it's thing. Gonna find it's going to yes. find a spot. The force comes somewhere. up through the floor. It's going to find its way out of the weakest link. Yeah. You know? We just yeah. rather them go to the larger muscle that can handle the stress. Exactly. Or up through your body, up back out through yeah. your head. Pull it on, or yeah. through the guy you're running or through the guy in front of you. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's perfect. Yeah. That's that, perfect. that was our toxin as we're going through. We presented on It's about your breaks. Mm -hmm. You know, we hear a lot of people, oh, yeah. I hear a lot of people about the old phrase, uh, all gas pedal, no brakes. And I know what they're meaning by it, but then just what some people yeah, exactly. kind of take that as. And it's like, 
some people are just like, all right, man, just strength, power, speed. That's all I need. And then you get these kids, and it's like I talk to some of my basketball kids, you know, mm-hmm. high school kids, and they're going through, and this kid knees roll in when he lands or when he's reactive or he's just stiff and he doesn't kind of use his shocks. Mm-hmm. So he goes through. I'm like, well, you know, it's great if you have a huge vertical jump. And it's something we told kids, but is that vertical jump any good when you're on the bench because you're hurt? Mm-hmm. So that was our big thing when we went at that conference is just talking about how to use your brakes mm-hmm. in different planes and different motions, just like you're talking about in the weight room, uh, just movement. So Also, it was great to see so many of those coaches at that clinic because ours were just hands-on. We want them all going through. We had mm-hmm. over 60 of them taking part in the hands-on, yeah. just jumping, moving, realizing – boy, that body positioning is so important on how we mm-hmm. run and land. We finish the shuffle, we stick. Or that body position come off from the grapevine, anything else. But where you control it, get it set, absorbing it, and then reapplying that force back in. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, you do it slow or you do it isometrically. You do it with stops or halts. Whether it's in the weight room or just on the field moving, then you do it a little bit quicker. You do a programmed agility, run here, run there, run there, run there, run there. Then you do a reactive agility that, with different types of cues, whether it's auditory, visual, verbal. Then you pro- that's that's what, how you progress an athlete to be, you know, to try to minimize the the, the risk of injury, yeah, which is sure. always you know everybody likes to say they can eliminate it but they can no, no, no. That, that was our <laughs> top yeah. yeah we said yeah. uh preventing acl injuries and he, he threw that subject out there because he loves to spark the thought mm-hmm. and he said what'd you say right when you started that clinic too well, the big thing is you know it's a title acl injury prevention and we know you can't prevent all of them mm-hmm. but we also know our big part is you've got to raise awareness on how to do that mm-hmm. and what to do in part of it and most of them they just don't understand they just figure it's going to happen or it's not and that's not right. When seventy percent of those ACL injuries are from non-contact mm-hmm. with the player, yeah, that's just how they're landing, how they're taking, making cuts, or poor positioning, poor conditioning, or balance where yeah. they need to be. You know, and that that kind of that next part that we with the weights, it's all two-legged movement. Most of it are squats and things. Do you do single leg movements in the strength room, or do you ma- mainly get that type of training with plyometric work or a combination? You no, know, we do a ton of unilateral work. Um, it's it's huge, full for our big guys and our in our. Uh, you know, our, our, our skill guys, they, they all do it. And, you know, you'd be amazed that you watch a big guy, you know, an offensive lineman, freshman offensive lineman might walk in here. He might be able to squat 405. Yeah. Real easy. But you ask him to do a split squat, body weight, and he can't. He's shaking all over the place. So, you know, there's a lot to be said for utilizing unilateral work, single leg work, stability work with all position groups, yeah. well, you know, that, that as a basis – Throughout your program. Oh, yeah. And that's 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 great. I'm glad to hear you say that because that's where we've got to get our athletes thinking a lot more about that that are out there because yeah. your change of direction and your movement isn't used with two legs. You know, it's that one. You're out, mm-hmm. you cut, you drop the hips, you explode, you pull it in, but it's that outside dominant leg you've got to pull into it. And if they're not strong and can't handle the yeah. stress of that, now you've got that 300-pound guy that's trying to make a hard cut and position into it. And what's going to happen to that knee when it's not trained and can't handle the stress of it? Oh, for sure. I mean, you look at football and it's probably – I, I know what the skill guys' percentage is. It's about 85% of the time they're on one leg. So big guys probably 60% of the time. Yeah. But either way, they're on one leg oh, yeah. that much of the time. And they've got a 300-pound body, and they've got another 300-pound guy, and, and they're trying to reapply force and change direction. They have to be strong. Yeah, it's a you lot know, of force. It's hard to mimic that amount of force. <laughs> big guys, yeah. yeah, it's hard. Yeah. So. Now, what would you see or some of the guys? Because, you know, so many of our athletes we work with, and we work wide range from our young kids, you know, 9, 10 years old up through college athletes. But what are some of the things unique you see for these kids coming into a, a college program that they could really benefit starting earlier with? Is it Because most of them now are doing strength training mm-hmm. or ever getting things corrective or nutrition. or what, what are the things you see would make it an easier transition for them? Well, I mean, you said a few of them right there. I think the biggest one is relative strength, like I touched on before. That gymnastic style strength, being able to move through planes, not necessarily super strong through a lot of different planes, but just being cognizant of the range of motions that they can move through. Just simple things like push-ups and chin-ups and doing them correctly, squatting, lunging, hinging, stepping, all those things, they need to be strong. Guys, you know, everybody wants to trap bar deadlift all this weight and squat all this weight, but they can't do a lunge or step. They can't. You know, they don't understand hip hinge. They don't understand back set position. Their core is weak. Their neck is weak. Um, and then kind of outside the weight room, the other 22 hours of the day, their nutrition stinks. Yeah. They're sleeping four hours a night. Yeah. You know, they're playing too many video games. They're not They're not understanding that the 22 hours of the day you're not training 
is arguably just as important or more important for your recovery than that two hours of breaking yourself down. You don't grow in the weight room. You grow at the dinner table and in bed sleeping. That's when you grow. So see, it's not just me saying that. <laughs> see, we got yeah. these guys that are doing yeah. that. You know, any of you, you hear that, and parents tell them the same thing. You know, you've got to eat for fuel, but also got recovery it. and going. But if you're if you're eating right and you're hydrating and you're training right, but you're still your sleep pattern are terrible. It's not gonna work. No, your body just breaks through. That's like you say, yeah. you've got trap bar. We can do this heavy weight. We can squat this four hundred pounds, five hundred pounds. That's great strength. But when you make a hard contact and move in another mm -hmm. player, you've got a weak neck, we've got weak spine, that one hip can't do the movement, right. the body's just going to buckle. You, you know? want to talk about injury prevention. What we know now is that the more sleep you get, the less susceptible you are to injury. If you sleep six hours a night, you have a 40% more probability of being injured than if you sleep eight hours a night. And it keeps going. If you get to 10, you have an even less probability of being injured. So the more sleep you get, the less susceptible you are to injury. You want to prevent injuries, sleep more. It's yeah, that's great. Easy. That's, that's great. great. Yeah. yeah, and that's that restful sleep, too. I mean, you guys going to bed, you know, at a certain time, you got the <laughs> phone, phone on, you're still in there, you're, you're up <laughs> yeah. checking that out. Shut yeah. it all down, get it out, shut the brain off, and get to sleep. You yeah. know? That's, a, that's a tough part of getting into. That's yep. awesome. Jeez. I know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm still working on that. We're getting that timing in there. <laughs> yeah. My brain's too thirty too many times going on. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. you know, that's where we adjust. That's good. Well that's 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 awesome. I think that's you know, some of the biggest things we want them just to see are that man, you've got to prepare. It's a complete athlete. It's not just a big strong guy. Because we've seen those guys that are strong, or we've seen the combine guys that run a great forty. Doesn't mean they're gonna be a great player out there. There's just so many variables. But sure. you know, for what we do that's where you can handle that. If you do your strength program, you're consistent with that. You're mobile. You can handle the stress of it. You're working some plyometric work, but doing the right amount of it. Uh, and I think, you know, and Coach is getting here. He's establishing more things for you. So we'll make sure we have a link that's attached for you guys as well. Because I think a big part he's already expressed to us that, you know, he wants to do things to help more of our coaches out here understand the foundation of what they should be doing and getting involved. And sure. So it's a big picture. I mean, that's amazed me when we worked with high school coaches is how few of them reach out to the junior highs in their area to work on conditioning or the sport or anything that they're doing. Yeah, that's they just wait till they get yeah. there. Yeah. You know, you're behind. If mm -hmm. you've got those junior high kids already understanding the foundation of strength training, eating correctly, getting themselves out, recovery, boy, they're, that job for you is just so much easier. They've already got now a better athlete at that point ready to go. Yeah, no, the best, the best programs I've seen are, are they, they start – in middle school or even before that in grade school where they're developing those athletes all the way through in a systematic form, you know, all the way through high school. You know, I remember when I was in South Carolina, Burns High School, which is, you know, they've put a lot of guys in the NFL famous. Uh, coach Sherratt is a, is a, is a, the head strength coach there. Does a phenomenal job, but he's got them when they're 10 years old. And it's, it's almost like a, an old Eastern block Olympic type deal where, he, you know, he's doing, gymnastics and, and dowel work and technique work and then slowly he progresses them all the way till they're seniors and sure. most of them are you know fantastic Jeez. you know when they get there that's and a lot of time yeah do. for sure you know for sure but it, it's you know that's that's what their pe is yep. you know and it, it, it works well and that's that's exactly what it should be there's still so many things that i I battle sometimes with the PE and things mm -hmm. that happen around and that you know movement is the thing but for us it's about fitness levels and what you're doing longevity in the sure. sport and, uh, you know, I, when I started, and those guys know me for a long time, is that I'd already had four knee and three shoulder surgeries by the time I was 20 years old. We just didn't know anything. As yeah, a wrestler, mistakes you, didn't you made. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, things we did. The coaches didn't know. The wrestling coach, you didn't say something hurt because, mm -hmm. you know, suck it up. That's the way it is. And they yeah. didn't know what how to evaluate it. Yeah. But we understand if you start early enough and start these programs, and that's what you're saying, you don't, doesn't mean those 10-year-olds are doing snatches with a 45-pound bar or something. <laughs> you know, you start basic movements where they're at, and then they progress by the time they become that high school athlete. <laughs> And again, not just doing one sport, we're working all these different things. Mm -hmm. They learn how to move, they learn how to take yeah. care of themselves. And then when they're old guy like me, they don't hurt. It's about slow much. cooking. You don't need to rush it. There's no rush. Yeah, slow There's cooking. no rush. Obviously, that's awesome. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, you have anything else for them? Any tidbits going into it? I think we also want to, we're going to take a few pictures and snap around and add to it so you guys can see. Uh, we haven't been into the new facility, and it's it's incredible with the stuff they've got. Pretty good, pretty fortunate. Yeah. yeah. How many racks did you say you guys have? 17, 17 platforms and racks, uh, power lift racks, uh, play flooring. Uh, we got all the Alico bumpers and 
the Alico Olympic bars, Texas Power Strength bars, iron grip dumbbells, iron grip plates, cable systems, TRXs, bands, chains, oh, kettlebells. Awesome. We got some auxiliary equipment. It's 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 pretty nice. It's that's cool. It's real nice. That's great. So we're very fortunate. Uh, well, good. Well, I appreciate it getting in and getting involved and, and mm -hmm. allowing us to come out and see what's going on inside. Yeah. I know I said, they're all excited about what's been going on here with the, the devils. I've got clients of mine, you know, training their boosters. We've got kids that are going all kinds of yep. things. They're all excited about some devil football well, and athletics. And we're I trying think, the best we can. We're going to, we're going to keep building this thing. So yeah, that's awesome. So I really that's appreciate exciting. everything. So thanks for being a part of it. Yeah, keep up with what you're awesome. doing. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, guys. That's terrific. We'll yeah. look for things and I'll have some links and whatever they can get. And we'll get it. Sounds good. All right. Thanks again. Appreciate it. All right. It. You got it. All right. Go devils.